Hello everyone, welcome back to the comprehensive guide to support. This time we're going to be doing Ganesh. I will return to Kepri because I want to cover him a little bit more thoroughly because he kind of shared uh, the that particular episode with sort of intermediate to basic stuff for su the support role. But for now I want to do Ganesh because Ganesh really truly captures the spirit of the support role in a way literally no one else in the game can. <clears throat> Pardon me. The reason for this is because of his passive. He can't get kills at all if he's within a certain distance of an ally, which is incredibly useful for certain items. I'll talk about that in a bit. But overall, it really makes him... It really makes... It really forces you, actually, you, the player, to absolutely... To really force you to think of yourself in the support role. So if you tend to play a more aggressive role like ADC, mid, or jungle, and you're having a really hard time keeping the support mindset because you keep going for kills when you're really not supposed to, figure out Ganesh. Practice with Ganesh. He will force you out of that, that mindset, simply by merit of his passive. So, the enemy support is Kepri. Now, this is fairly interesting, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Now, here's where his passive good fortune really actually comes in handy. Alright? Uh, this is still up. Sentinel's Gift. This is almost a must-buy starter item on Ganesh because, because of your increased assist range of 20 here and your increased assist time, it makes it far easier to actually pull the passive for this. For that same reason, Gauntlet of Thebes is a little easier to build. Now let me see, based on their team composition, I'm not really feeling anything that's uh, anti-auto attack. So we're going to go with... Uh, you know, med is probably my best bet right now, honestly. Grab these, and, uh, no, hold on. There we go. We'll go with this. So, yes, with Ganesh, because of his increased assist procs from Good Fortune... This is hugely useful. Ganesh also is very unique in literally all of his abilities are actually very supportive. Turn of Fate increases the damage your allies do. Ohm increases his protections and silences enemies. Remove obstacles allows him to pass through walls, which can be very handy in certain circumstances, as well as pops up enemies. And his ult reduces the move speed and protections of enemies who pass over those lines, as well as doing fairly significant damage. I almost forgot I needed to grab that as well as doing fairly significant damage, but all of his abilities are supportive. Yeah, sure, he, to some extent, slaps. He does actually do a little bit more damage than you would expect from such a focus, uh, support-minded guardian, but overall, it really comes down to just the cool abilities that he brings to bear here. So we're actually going to try to pop this down. I was hoping I wouldn't get poked by that, but I'll counter-poke here. I'm going to use the... Potion here for some gentle healing here. I don't know why Neath is bothering trying to shoot Artemis. That's a bit of a problem. Okay, we have our pop-up now, which is really nice. I completely whipped that, but that's alright, I guess. <laughs> now, when you're Ganesh, don't worry about killing minions or killing enemies when allies are around because you automatically give the credit to them. You'll see this at some point during this match. Um, the incredibly nice pop-up. That was a really nice combo by the Neath there. I'm going to try to heal up here. We're not going to be able to press that that hard. We're going to try to do a more poke. See, look at how much damage I was able to do just at level 2 with no increases. She's trying to poke me out really hard. We're actually going to go ahead and use the... Uh... Okay, good. I want to go steal their harpy, actually. This is a really good opportunity. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Take theirs. It's very important, if possible, to take what you can from the enemy's jungle, because it matters more. This actually was uh, is best exemplified in 
ironically enough, when I was, I think I was like 11 years old or something, and this particular concept occurred to me, fun fact about me, in Advance Wars, back when I played that when I was like 11 or so, and uh, the, we went through the, you know, you're going through the Advance Wars tutorial levels, and it was the level on capturing uh, cities, and I had the option of capturing a neutral or an enemy city, and... Obviously, the enemy city, you not only steal their resources, but you also get to increase your own as well. Making the... taking the enemy's city the better choice. It's the same thing in Smite. Anytime you can steal anything of the enemies, not only are you getting the normal benefits associated with that... Why is she here? Why is Artemis right here? I... I'll be really honest. I did not even notice that she had gone for this. Why? I completely missed that. That's partially my fault. I was not paying enough attention there because I was too busy recounting my Advance War story, which is totally on me. But it still doesn't make a hell of a lot of sense for her to be going after our purple buff this early in the game when she's level 3. That's a lot of damage that she would be potentially taking there. Neath is going to take the uh, the health buff for that, you know, just to catch up, which is fine. Um, now, you'll notice that I increased uh, Turn of Fate first. That's that way I can get that increased damage to Neath. I can do more damage to the wave for her. Uh, that's generally why you want to increase that first. I thought for sure he was going to make a move on that, but he did not. But yeah, anyways, what the Artemis pulled there, while impressive, was highly risky, because if we just ignored her, she would have been actually behind, and that would have been the better option anyways, would just be to let her take the purple buff. Hit her, hit her, we've got them dead to rights here. There we go, and we got Kepri too. That is the true power of Ganesha's ult. Now, you'll notice that Artemis at one point used her Aegis, and I really didn't care. That's because even though she used her Aegis, she still had reduced protections. Protection reduction of 15, by the way, which is insanely impactful this early in the game. But she still lost her protections. She still had a movement speed slow. So, it doesn't matter that she Aegis, that just prevented the damage, which isn't the most important thing about that. I'm gonna need to go back after we clear this. Uh, but that, it's not the most important thing about Ganesha's ult. The most important thing about Ganesha's ult is actually the slow, the protection reduction, the power... I think it's still got a power reduction. No, it's just got protection. It used to do power, I think, a little bit. And Kepri's still over here, huh? Alright. I need to get out of here, because I don't have the mana for this. I also need Thebes. At this point, I should also really be letting Neath alone over there, because at this particular point in time, she's going to wind up being ahead of Artemis because she's got another kill. She's got 300 gold ahead. She needs to be alone against Artemis, because I think overall she'll win any fight that doesn't involve Bacon, uh, Artemis' ult. So I want to make sure that Kepri sees me over here, so that way I can kind of force him over here, which is kind of my intention at this particular point. We're going to aggressively ward right now, uh, just because I really think that right now that's the best option. Uh, aggro ward there. We're going to go back and look for... No, don't, don't... I mean, poking out is nice and all, but we should really be doing this damage camp. Okay, good. I was kind of concerned Thor was going to come over and try to split this with me, when really who needed it was Baron Samdi, because he's a little bit behind right now. Now I'm going to go grab my buff right over here really quick. And then after that, I'm going to need some physical protections. Now, what I'm going to pick up for physical protections very specifically is, I think I'll probably grab Sovereignty, just give my, or, more protection auras to my allies, which I think will be very impactful. Um, I think would be my best option. Why is Thor over there? This is gonna get fairly interesting now. Neath has her ult. She could have used it there, to be honest. And I'm surprised she didn't. 
Uh, we're not. We're gonna leave that alone. I don't need to attack that. I can't do anything with that simply because, obviously, I'm support. So I wasn't gonna be able to do diddly squat there anyways. So we're just gonna leave that be. Now the Janus has to go back at this. Oh uh, no, he's not gonna go back. He's gonna play this one dangerously. Interesting. All right. Well, I'm gonna tank these minions and then we're gonna back up and try to lure Janus out because I wanna ult him. Ah, uh, shoot. Close. Come on, we can take him. Okay, we can't actually kill him, but... We can get pretty damn close. We've... Oof, Janus had to go back, which is pretty significant. Can we get this? Good play, good play. That's fine. That's fine. No, no problem. That doesn't matter. I was going to be able to... It's not like I can't dash through it. If I had my dash up, I just didn't. That's totally fine. He didn't do anything wrong there. He's fine. So at this particular point, let's see. Yep, Neith is... Also, this is the second significant thing. Neith is building Transcendence. She wants those stacks. Now, because I'm Ganesh, it wouldn't have been any particular kind of problem if I had remained in lane, but for literally every other support, you would have wanted to leave at that point anyways, just to make sure she got her stacks. We're having some kind of a connection error here. What is this? Who's having trouble connecting? It's probably not me. I very rarely have connection problems. At least not internet connection problems. Alright, that's pretty wild. And just like that, we already have Gauntlet of Thebes fully stacked. She's doing really well in the stacks. I thought for sure he was going to try to stop me. Ah, shoot. Oh, we're going for this? Okay, that's fine. Here we go. Now you want to, the only real issue with Kepri is that his escape is very easy to block, because it's only the dash, and if he hits you with that, then, nice, then he's going nowhere fast with that. Oh, the Osiris is a problem for me, because I can't silence him out of much. I don't know why Neath is over here, but I'm okay with this. That's, that's a problem. The Artemis with that ult, that's a problem. Shoot. Holy cow, I need to get out of here. I'm not going to survive. Although we did force them back. I'm surprised the Neath made it over here in time to actually do something. That was a really great fight for us. A very surprising fight. I'm going to be really honest. I wasn't expecting that many people over there. I wasn't expecting Neath to beat Artemis. Because th technically speaking, Artemis should have beaten Neath there. Because Artemis has a self-move speed buff that Neath doesn't have. So I'm kind of surprised Neath made it first. I, I wasn't surprised Neath ulted into that fight. That was fantastic. That was really well timed. She picked that up. That was great. Love that. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I love having Aneath on the team. Um, is because she can impact a team fight even if she's not involved directly in the team fight. But she was still able to somehow outpace the Artemis. I have a sneaking suspicion it's because the Artemis tried to clear a wave to try to catch up first. I, I feel like that's probably why, but I'm not 100% sure. It's still a little surprising. I'm just going to leave Janus there. I don't want Janus to leave quite yet, because if I ult him in the middle of the lane, he's dead. Assuming Kepri isn't there to save his life. He, that's why he's sticking close to the walls. He's not sticking close enough to the walls. Oh, somebody is not even here. I thought somebody was going to go after that. He did not. Alright, that's on me for not paying enough attention again. I thinking about the logistics of... Artemis losing to Neath in our running battle. Alright. I'm... Oh. What are we doing? What are we doing? I want to know where... There's Janus. Are they grouping up for another team fight? That'd be really unreasonable at this time. Ah, shoot. 
So close. It was a good portal, though. Fortunately, my, uh... The nice, another nice thing about, um, Ganesh's ult is that it's just such a low cooldown. Nope, you back off. Uh, alright. I think I jumped the gun a little bit on that one, to be honest. Nice, nice. We can take him. Nope. I'm not gonna chase that. I don't need that kill. Ouch. Nice ult, nice ult. Oh, this is up too. Very nice. We can take gold, absolutely. I'll start tanking it, but Chalk is probably going to have to take over tankings. Why are we the only ones here? What is this? There is Neath. A little late to the party. Although, to be fair, she was taking other... Nope, you don't. Ah, shoot. Can we take... Can we take Janos? No, not with Kepri here. That's just not gonna happen. Ouch. Oh, shoot. No, we need to... We need to get out of here. We do not need to be here. Oh, why are you re-engaging? Please retreat. We are not in any condition to be fighting this. I don't have the health to tank. We just lost our other main frontliner. Why? 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 All right, fine. Let's let's do this then. Never mind. Thor is going to pick that up, hopefully. That's right, Kepri. You're too dummy thick. There we go. Oh, that's neat. I'm rooted. Oh, I was stunned actually. Okay. There we go. I can't believe we picked up two team fights in a row. Wow, we're really snowballing hard here. For, and that was actually, I'm not sure if you noticed, but the Thor wall did not stop me because Ganesh just runs through the walls. I'm making a mistake. I'm actually, I actually have made a mistake here. I have leveled up, remove obstacles. You might be thinking to yourself, but Professor, this does more damage. Yes, but that's not my goal here. It doesn't improve the pop-up. It doesn't reduce the cooldowns. It doesn't do anything for me. Ohm would be a better increase here because that increases my protection and allows me to use it more often. So I've made a mistake here, actually. We're also going to grab Blink. Why Blink, you might ask? Well, there's a couple of extremely specific reasons. Let me double-check and see if I need anti-healing first. I don't. Artemis is the only one with any variety of... anything, really. Uh, so we're going to go for... Genji's Guard for the cooldowns. Very specifically. Anyways, back to what I was saying before. Um, what was I saying before? Yes. So, yeah, I do more damage with the pop-up, but it's all about that support. And with Ohm, I can prevent Lancelot from doing most of his damage. I can prevent Janus from escaping. It's actually pretty significant. But I am making a mistake leveling that up. I should not be. I should not be leveling that up. I wasn't paying enough attention. I just kind of defaulted to that for some reason. I'm not sure why. But it's it's not what I should be doing. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pull his experience. He is so wicked ahead of Osiris, though. I probably actually can. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and split with uh, Chalk here. He is so far ahead of Osiris. He really doesn't need the experience, to be completely honest. I don't know why I defensively warded there. We're gonna aggressively ward right here. All right. They're trying to prevent Artemis and Kepri from taking right tower. Janos is on his way. I think he ulted. There's Lancelot. All right, he took someone with him. That's not good. Now, why did I take Blink, by the way? Oh, that's also a kill bestowed, which is really hugely impactful. Also, if you can pop someone up on the lines, it does huge amounts of damage. You have no idea. But, um... Yeah, that kill bestowed? Neath got those. Which is perfect. Which is absolutely fantastic. They just surrendered. 
Now, I would normally not upload a surrender, but I have actually been able to discuss everything I wanted to talk about Ganesh with one exception, and I can just talk about that here. Ganesh's ult is, I think, most impactful at the end game when you can either ult your own titan or ult theirs to keep them from stopping you killing it, or alternatively doing a large amount of damage to the titan, to the enemy titan, if it wanders out of that, and really helping your titan do massively increased damage because you're reducing the enemy protection using it. So with the one exception of not being able to demonstrate ulting a titan, which either yours or the enemy's, is very impactful, I was able to cover everything I wanted with Ganesh. Ganesh is very straightforward, even though I made a mistake on my ability leveling. I should have leveled Ohm second, and I was leveling up the um, obstacle removal, or whatever it's called, uh, instead. But Ganesh is the spirit of support. This is actually one of those rare games where I can sit here and confidently say... This was a near-perfect support game. If I'd leveled up Ohm instead, that would have been more of a perfect um, support game. Hello. They gave this a glyph, huh? Alright. I'll have to examine that. I will definitely have to examine that. I, I know they updated today. I just didn't... I haven't checked it yet. Actually, let me pull that up on my other screen here. Because I want to know what her other option was. Because I feel like... I'm sorry, it was patched yesterday. But I haven't gotten a chance to, um... Actually check it. I just want to look at the glyphs very specifically. Because those are huge. Huge. They changed the Jotuns. Did they give it a third one? Oh, no, they changed where it went. That's fine. Well, I'll talk about that in a second. Let me get back to Ganesh. So, the impactful thing about Ganesh here is really that all of his abilities are truly supportive. Compare him to Athena, who's really only got... Well, who's got one ability that just is not supportive, all right? Her phalanx isn't supportive at all. Um, as an example, he's pure support, uh, just like Kepri is. Now... A particularly interesting thing you can do with Ganesh that may surprise you but is very effective is also you can build Mystical Mail. I wasn't going to build that in this particular match, and I don't usually build that in Conquest, but one day I'm going to show you how effective a Mystical Mail Ganesh can be in Arena and in Slash, where team fights are way more, they start way earlier and they're way more common, and you can actually do really impressive amounts of damage with Ganesh with a Mystical Male Voidstone combination, especially in conjunction with his ult. That really does a large amount of damage very quickly to a large group of enemies. Again, I don't normally employ this in Conquest, because, quite frankly, a lot of the times it's just not worth it. Cooldowns are more important. I was going to go for Breastplate of Valor as my next item. Um... Also, one other thing I would like to mention is doing Sentinel's Boon is my preferred starter item for this because, again, your assists, your assist range and your assist timer are extended with Ganesh, so you have a much larger window of opportunity to get that percentage HP and MP heal that Sentinel's Boon offers you, which is surprisingly very impactful, especially when you're trying to take a Phoenix or a Tower and the enemy minion wave wanders through, that is six minions wandering through, okay? 4% of your maximum health and mana times six. You're healing almost 25% of your health and mana every time a wave is killed near you, or every time you kill a wave near any of your allies. And if you're taking a tower or a phoenix, since you're support, you're going to be taking it with someone else. That is a large amount of healing going on in one go, and I think a lot of people forget that. That doesn't even include any potential assists you get for enemy god kills, or assists, actually, because Ganesh doesn't get kills. So I usually go for Sentinel's Boom, okay? And that's very specifically why. Um, 
but I also went specifically with sovereignty because I really wanted to emphasize the defense on my team. Primarily because they had enough auto attackers where I didn't want to necessarily build attack speed debuffs like Midgardian Mail or the Witchblade, but I still wanted to boost my allies' physical protection, so I went right into sovereignty. Now, I didn't pull Pestilence in because the only one self-healing here was Janus. Osiris did not have any form of self-heal. He didn't even build Death's Toll. Artemis was the only one with lifesteal with her Devourer's Gauntlet and her Death's Toll. Janus had no lifesteal. He might have splashed in some with this. I don't know what he was going to if he was going to get Divine Ruin or if he was going to get Spear of the Magus. I know Spear of the Magus has 12% lifesteal, which still isn't so significant that I would want Pestilence in that circumstance. But at the time, at this particular snapshot in time, Anti-Heal wasn't really necessary, right? That's what it just basically comes down to. So I want you to understand that Ganesh really is, once again, I, wanna, I want you to walk away knowing this inscribed on your soul. Ganesh is the support role, summarized in a character. Okay, again, if you are coming into the support role from being a main at a more aggressive role, jungle, mid, ADC, and you're having a hard time mentally switching over to that support mindset, Ganesh is the way to go. All right? Now, you'll notice Kepri did not do very well, and I mentioned right off the bat that Kepri-Ganesh matchup was very interesting. This is because I shut down a lot of what Kepri does, okay? Particularly one of his most powerful abilities, which is Abduct which increases his protections, silences the target, and pulls them back to wherever he wants them to go. I can silence Kepri out of this, and this this actually, it was, despite how poorly the Kepri did, the Kepri actually played this the best they could. They waited, you'll notice that a lot of the times, Kepri didn't use Abduct until after I'd used Ohm. If you go back and rewatch the early game where I was in the duo lane against Kepri and a couple of those team fights, you'll actually notice that a lot of the times Kepri didn't even bother using Abduct until he'd seen me use Ohm for whatever reason on someone else. Then he would use Abduct. And this was because he didn't want Abduct to be interrupted and cancelled. So the Kepri did the very best he could. It just so happens that, ultimately, I was able to shut that down enough and also use my ults effectively enough. Now, what was fairly interesting, and this is why I got my ult so early, Neath died and I was pulling 100% of the minion experience from the wave. I was actually getting that, ex that whole experience because I was actually killing those minions because I was alone. And that pushed me to level 5 first, before Artemis, before Kepri, before Neath. And I was able to use my ult, like, as you saw in the beginning there, to massively reduce the Artemis' protections. Again, Aegis only prevents damage. It does not prevent anything else. Her protections were still down. Her move speed was still down. And that's... That's all Neath needed at that point. Neath versus Artemis is also a very bad matchup for Artemis because all Neath has to do is hit a single spirit arrow and Artemis is doomed because Artemis does not have any form of regular escape. She has a move speed buff and that is it. Neath has a backflip, so as long as she doesn't step into one of Artemis' traps, she's golden because the most Artemis can do without a trap is slow her down or stun her using bacon. And that's it. Neath has way more options. She can backflip away from Artemis when she needs to heal. She can then use Spirit Arrow to root Artemis and then just make a quick, clean getaway. The enemy dual lane had a really unfortunate matchup here that was very much against them. Which, it, it just happens. Um, but that was primarily the problem with the dual lane there. Alright, Artemis also, by the way, has the same issue with Ganesh. I pop her up, she's gonna be stuck there for a little while, I slow her down to my ult, she's basically gonna have a really hard time getting away from that, things like that. Um, 
Now, before I leave this screen, I do want to take a look at Executioner and the, the glyphs here. All right, so she chose Ferocious Executioner, which your next basic attack marks an enemy god. Okay, so this is Jotun's Ferocity in just slapped onto the Executioner instead. If you hit the marked enemy, did they change it at all? They made it stacks. You gain one stack. Each stack provides 2% increased damage towards the marked enemy, stacking up to 10 times for... 20%? That's pretty strong. I can see why they would build that on Artemis. What's the other one? The Heavy Executioner. Basic attacks against an enemy reduce your target's physical protection by 17.5%. Max 2 stacks. That's impressive. Attack speed is capped at 1.75. Silver Branch will still only provide power from passive. Once you... Oh, the Heavy Executioner is... Very situational. That's only for very specific hunters. All right, the ferocious... I can't speak tonight. The ferocious executioner makes a lot more sense on Artemis. That was actually the correct choice. Um, yeah. So really quick, while we're here, um, I'm just going to go on ahead and talk about some of these changes here on the patch notes as well. So we're going to make this a dual episode here. Um... Or, no, I think I'll actually do this in a separate episode. Uh, now we'll go ahead and slap it on here. No, I actually really should make this a separate episode, so it's not just attached to the comprehensive guide. Yeah, I'll talk about this uh, in a separate episode. Uh, thank you all very much for joining me. If you liked this, please like and subscribe. If you didn't, please ignore me. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, ideas, suggestions, or requests, please leave them down in the comment section below. And thank you all very much for joining me, and have a great 24 hours.